Usually when I start doing a project, I start with a, a location, a space, the place, what is given. And in this case, it, the location is a ballet stage. So my approach was, okay, how can we uh, work with this without adding anything? How can you make this space perform? I'm very much interested in, in, uh, in performativity, also in terms of uh, architecture performing, objects uh, and bodies, of course. So... Uh, I removed all the seating, so we only had a dance floor in one big space, which we then cut up in 200 pieces and um, created a pattern on the floor, which you don't, as you enter the space, might notice, because when you enter the space as an audience, uh, it's just a big grey cube. And the idea is the audience and the dancers enter together and uh, there is nothing uh, in the space but sound and people. The dancers slowly start to do uh, a choreography, which is about 10 minutes long, and uh, um, after 10 minutes they repeat it. Uh, they dance in different uh, constellations, uh, sometimes three men, sometimes two women. After about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, um, four Polish workers enter the, the space and start stacking the floor, taking up the pieces. It is like a huge jigsaw puzzle. And what happens in that sense is that uh, the dancers continue their choreography, but as the surface is changing, it will have an impact on what they can do and how their dance uh, taking shape, and it's, it has an impact, and they also uh, provoke a pedestrian body or a practical body in within the dancer because suddenly you have to take maybe five steps up to continue your pirouette uh, that you had just uh, completed before on a flat surface and suddenly these uh, layers are having an impact of the, the aesthetic dance and at the same time you have the four workers who are um, just following a manual, uh, there's no other direction, also representing somehow a practical body. And of course you can always discuss what is, is it authentic? Can you take something from outside the theater, put it on stage and, and then have a, a piece of reality? And of course it will always change, so it will become another fiction, but, but I think it's the closest to, to um, folding or braiding different kind of uh, bodies paradigm and I wanted I was interested in in, um, in, in a way uh, having different layers of body types paradigms in a way to exhibit the aesthetic body the audience uh, I think in the beginning probably, a bit insecure on where to place themselves in the room. Uh, what also happens is once the floor is starting to be stacked, the audience is also constantly either being divided or moved. Or and, and, and what I've heard is that the audience are so much more aware of each other than normally where you, you sit passively in a chair and you're just watching something taking place and not really, you don't really have your own body present when you are in a theater or a cinema. It's kind of not non-existing feel here uh, both because also the f entire floor is is one big speaker there are these uh, speakers under the uh, under the floor and uh, they make uh, the floor vi vibrate so parts of the music comes out of the floor which also means as when you walk around you feel music through your body and not through your brains in a way uh, um, which I think is interesting in this uh, situation The first 30 minutes there are no films and um, at one point one of the bricks are moved and, and under that is a self-playing instrument built into the floor which then starts to play and at the same time uh, this movie appears where you see this um, detailed microscopic view of some uh, fabric. It's hard to say what it is, but it's moving in sync with the music. So when the instrument in the floor is hitting a note, it's a mechanical instrument, it triggers something on the film. 
triggers this fabric? Do you recognize that maybe it's something, it's, 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 it's skin or is it is this fabric around uh, a leg or some other kind of uh, body part that is then contracting in, uh, in sync with this instrument in space? And uh, as you come out, it's, you see it's uh, five uh, dancers uh, not moving on their own, but being moved by the music sent directly into the, the muscles by electronic uh, impulses uh, that then makes the body uh, contract. So the instrument is connected uh, to the dancers in the film. The second film is kind of constructed a sculpture of these machines called CPM, Continuous Passive Motion Machinery, which is something that you use uh, for people who are not able to move their own arm and for, in a way to train their muscles. Uh, it just moves a joint uh, back and forth. But in the film, there are no body parts in the machinery. The bodies are in the space. So there is this uh, correspondence between uh, the machines uh, the film. It's not like the dancers are directly pretending to be inside the machines, but there is a correlation of how they move uh, and how these kind of very simplistic uh, movements uh, that are made in the, by these machines. Um, so there's a connection there. The third film is um, the most narrative in a way. The others are a little more abstract. The third one starts maybe very abstract with these kind of this grid that creates sound, like rusty iron poles and uh, rhythmic noise appearing from, from these, almost like an instrument. And the camera, as camera comes out, it, it finds this woman uh, playing the fence in a way which is, it is a fence, uh, it's actually a border uh, within uh, in the landscape uh, and she's hitting it with a stick to create sound um, and it's Kim Gordon, uh, the bass player from former Sonic Youth, in a nice tutu uh, playing uh, on the ballet theme and for me it was important about this kind of uh, border, it's, it, it goes both in relations to borders within the body, but also in, in a landscape. Now that we have a landscape within the space, which is more like one-to-one -one because it's a topography of a landscape and it's constantly changing. And then you have this border structure within a landscape, uh, which is in a way so artificial because if you look at a Google Earth, you know, the landscape doesn't really care about the borders, uh, but then someone just drew a line at some point. Uh, so it's somehow also uh, containing everyone within the space as as uh, as this film appear. But it's it's filmed as an instrument. This border is performing, which is then being danced to by uh, two of the dancers uh, within the end. For me personally, when I go to the Theater. This fourth wall is always such a artificial thing in a way, and um, I was just interested in. Uh, and of course, it's been done thousands of times. This kind of breaking down the fourth wall, but in the theater, it seems so, uh, in a way, so radical uh, because uh, the th the fact that you have no seating and uh, you're very close to the. Uh, dancer. It's in a way also what, especially now, virtual reality is used for a lot, is making it possible for you to be at a place where you're not in a way supposed to be. For instance, standing on stage with the Royal Ballet dancers. Um, in a way, I, th I think here, because the problem with, uh, with virtual reality is that it's all within uh, uh, the illusion and your own body still isn't in a way there. You can just snap and then 
it's another world. But the context here is, I think, um, does something uh, when uh, when your own physicality is is in the way, uh, constantly being challenged.